Hello, I'm Audio. Um, this is Daitokoku, and I need to work on not saying um so much. I think I got out of that habit a long time ago, and now I'm back into it. Also, this game is much worse than Sengoku Rants and Daibancho about me knowing what I'm doing. Usually, the case is I feel like I should be doing a lot more than I actually am doing, and I just happen to leave it you know, in a spot where there's nothing to do. Like, I got this girl, and I'm gonna give her this, and that's it for now, until I manufacture more stuff. I guess I'll give her that, too. Um... Why not, I guess. Uh... So... Yep. Like I said, uh, she's a decent cannon unit. I'll, I'll use her for that. That's really about it. Um, I don't even know if anybody got hurt when I took over this place. Doesn't look like it. No, actually, she can go. Yeah. I like to have uh, her, the education girl on my defensive fleet, so she can just sit there and give people more XP from defending, I guess, because you get better admirals than her. Without fail, you'll get better admirals than her. And, uh... Whatever. So, you don't want to send her into the front line. I mean, you can. She's a good... She's a fairly decent admiral compared to people like Rizo and Well, I mean everybody's got you can you can apply everybody to something, so Whatever. Um Cat Whisper. Like I said in the last part, this is pretty much something you want to do as soon as it comes up. I'm not sure, I don't even remember what I opted into instead of this. It was probably equally good though. Um I think it was getting Shibagami. But this is really good. You gotta do this. Um, it lets you tech up, so to speak. You can um, get better equipment, and uh, you notice this immediately. Like, if you start pressing into the Ares colonies and you don't have this, and maybe even another rank of it, uh, though that's staggered. I'll talk about that later. Um, you start to get slammed really hard, and it's difficult as hell to keep moving. And, you know. It's just because your numbers aren't big enough, so you gotta get bigger numbers. That's all it comes down to. And there are a couple other things, um, like when you invade certain territories, you need certain kinds of ships with your fleets, where they take bonus damage, or you'll go up against someone with 9999 laser damage, and you're like, what the fuck do I do? And I don't remember what you do in that situation, so... I think you stacked fighters. And you just let everyone else die, or something. Or you brought one person with massive laser resistance and then a bunch of subs. I think that's what you do. This has been a while, and I'm... Those of you who played the game, you know which enemy I'm talking about. I remember what it is. And I haven't played the game to that point for a very long time, so... Um, anyway, I'll talk about this scene here. This girl is really cute. She's got one of my favorite designs. Uh, unfortunately, the cat offsets that tremendously, and she becomes one of the more annoying characters because of the cat. Uh, it's just too over the top for me. I don't... You know. Maybe a long time ago I would have liked that cat as a character. I was one of those faggots who went to Hot Topic in high school and bought Invader Zim shirts, and I really liked that super eccentric grr attitude. I am nothing like that now. I much I prefer the characters that are quieter and more serious, I guess. I also like Rance a lot, but he's not, you know, he's not like that. I also don't like Iso Isoroku, and she is... whatever. You know what? I guess I just proved myself... What, wrong? I don't know. Just... That I guess my understanding of what characters I like isn't, uh... Clear cut as I thought? I don't know where I'm going with this. Done talking about that. Um... But this girl's a scientist. She gives you lots of good stuff. So... I kinda wanna leave this to go, but... I'll move on, because... I basically explained it, and god, isn't that noise just horrible? She does have H scenes. Two of them, I think. They're both okay. Um, this is her lab, I like the way it looks. Um, not much else to say, so we'll just move on. Just talks about technology, um, 
Japan in World War II had pretty good technology. I mean, they weren't, they were far from being outclassed by anybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, their navy was outclassed, but that it wasn't because of technology. It was because of their numbers, I believe. I could be wrong about this as well, but, you know. I'm, I'm almost positive the Japanese army in World War II had a completely up-to-date navy, air force, you know, the works. So, I don't really know anything about their land forces, though. I'd imagine they lagged behind there because they were on islands all the time. Like, you know, it's not like Germany and Russia where it was all across, you know, a huge continent. But, I digress because I truly have no idea. Um, I uh, wasn't paying attention, so I don't know where this is going here. Um, oh, they're going to France, I guess. That's what was going on. Uh, Donuts, uh, I think her name is, well, his name is different in real life. It's Donuts. Maybe they just switched the vowels. I'm really not sure about that either. Um, but there's a lot to say about him. He's actually kind of respectable. A lot like Rommel in World War II. Even though they fought for the Nazis, they were uh, really respectable people. I mean, you know, like you can take the most extreme person who's like, Oh, I hate Nazis. They didn't do anything right. I don't care what their ideals were, you know? Like, someone who's really ignorant. I mean, somebody who knows what the Nazi ideals were and everything is going to think the Nazis were kind of crappy, right? They were kind of horrible people, generally. Of course, it varies, you know. Based on the people within the Nazi party, some people were probably fine. Like Rommel and Donuts. But, you know. They would, uh... Anyway, those people who are completely ignorant would have to acknowledge the fact that Rommel was pretty honorable. You know what I mean? Like... Ugh. Otherwise, they're insane. That's how that goes. Um... Yeah, well, this this is nothing like what happened in real life. The way um, France falls in Daitokoku. Uh, in real life, Germany conquered a neighboring country or something, and they just flanked around the whole Maginot Line. They completely disregarded it. They took France, mainland France, almost instantly compared to what France thought it would take. People thought this would take a very long time. I'm again, I don't know the exact numbers, but everyone assumed France would withhold. You know, the German or withstand the German invasion for a very long time, and it was pretty much an immediate loss. Um, they relied completely on the Maginot Line, and it was just an outdated, like, it was it was designed with World War I in mind. And back then it would have been amazing, because it was all trench warfare, you know? Like, you can't come out of the trench or you get shot, pretty much. It was the death of spears and cavalry and the, you know, beginning of the rifle, I guess, I think it was rifles. Yeah, the rifle period. Where uh, you couldn't do cavalry charges anymore. You couldn't... You know, units... Military units designed around... Flanking and whatever had minor success in World War One, But they just couldn't get behind the trenches and the infantry. So people developed tanks, you know. And it went on like that. But the Maginot Line was designed to just halt in advance, and when it got completely flanked, it fucked over France. Um, yeah. But uh, as far as the subs go, Germany pioneered U-boats, submarines, um, and that's what Donitz references in his game, and that's what he did in real life. He was, I believe, the Navy uh, commander-in-chief for Nazi Germany. Um, he ended up becoming head of the Reich in... Uh, when, when Hitler died, he was the leader. I don't remember what came of that. I don't remember what his punishment was. But anyway, Germany pioneered U-boats. They had them all over the fucking place in real life. They were just sinking trade ships. They attacked everything in the uh, Atlantic. They were vicious. And that was probably, you know, I mean, along with blimps, you know, everyone knows the Hindenburg. Everyone knows that Germany pioneered Zeppelins. Right? But they fell off massively. U-boats didn't. Submarines are still used all over the world today. Um, but that's what Donuts is for this game. And they just mixed them together, I guess, because they could. In that Takoku, they just mixed subs and the assault on France together. <laughs> for fun. Um, 
Anyway though, subs in this game are finicky things, for me at least. I don't necessarily understand what makes them work 100% of the time. Uh, and I, I haven't ever been able to figure it out because I haven't really tried enough. Like it would fail for me on a couple occasions and then I would never do it again. Let me explain what I'm talking about. Subs in this game, uh, cloaked ships, they're basically subs, I'll just call them whatever I want, you'll know what I'm talking about. They, uh, they cannot be attacked if the other enemy fleet doesn't have any detection for them. So when you're fighting subs, you need detection for the subs, or you're fucked, basically. Um, when you're using subs, if the enemy has no detection, you should be able to steamroll them, basically. Uh, but I don't find that working a lot. I think when a sub is alone, and, you know, this would make sense, it's open to fire from everybody. Like, if you deploy Togo with no subunits, um, and donuts, spoilers, you get her in your navy, uh, she won't ever be shot. It'll always go to Togo, because the enemy can't detect the subunit. If Togo's fleet is destroyed, it'll start targeting her. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Again, I'm not positive, because... I mean, I don't think I'm making it up, but I, I feel like I've deployed subs before and they just owned. Like, I didn't have to deploy another ship with the submarines for them to not be hit. You know what I'm saying? But, I don't, I don't know the context for that. I don't know if it happened or if I'm completely insane, so. But yeah, I mean, France in real life, they kind of got fucked in World War II. They didn't do anything cool. I think they had some African colonies, or they retreated somewhere. Um, that's what happens in this game. They retreat to Madagascar, I think. I don't know anything about Madagascar's history. Was it a French colony? Could have been. Could have been. But this goes on for quite a bit, and there's not that much to say. Also, Maginot Line, Reich, I hope I'm pronouncing it alright. We'll see. Again, didn't learn about any of that stuff in school. Had to figure it all out on my own. And I looked up the pronunciation of all these other languages some time ago, but again, that was some time ago. Um, yeah, more of Raytia. I guess I'll leave it. I haven't seen her for this part yet. So, there we go. And uh, it's not autoing, but that's okay. Let me just click through it real quick. Um, yeah, but uh, Donitz in real life, again, his name might have been slightly different. I know it was basically the same. He seemed pretty cool, I think. I could be mixing him up with someone else, though, which would be bad. Um, I guess while I'm talking about it, Manstein was pretty well respected, too. I don't know his beliefs or his background, but I think he killed himself in captivity. Uh, not sure about that. Rommel killed himself, but it was because Hitler asked. Um... There was a plot that Hitler thought Rommel was behind to help kill him. I think it was something along those lines, and Rommel killed himself to have his family spared. So, I mean, what? That's pretty admirable. That's the opposite of what Goebbels did. <laughs> Goebbels killed his family. Uh, even though the kids would have... You know, I'm, I'm almost positive the kids would have been spared by Russia or the United States. The United States was sparing basically everybody. Russia was massacring every Nazi they encountered throughout Europe. But more about that later. I don't want to go over Goebbels history now when it's introducing Ermi. And I don't know Don is his first name either. So but he was a head honcho in the Nazi army. I mean like I said he you know filled in Hitler's shoes when Hitler died. It was only for like a little while, but you know, still kind of a big deal, right? So, anyway, her design I guess I haven't even talked about designs that much, have I? I talked about Raytia, but I mean, it's just this Raytia, so I'll talk about the others. Goebbels, she's a little too tan for me. Chesto's a little too big, probably. She's still cute. I like the way she looks. I like her eyes. I like her attitude, generally. Um, Ermi, I mixed feelings about her. Like, I, I said I like the quieter characters who are more serious, and that's what she is, but I don't know. It's, uh, maybe it was just in comparison to that obnoxious cat, you know what I mean? Like, 
Ermi's cool, but I like Raytheon more. So wouldn't I like the more outspoken, eccentric, like, prominent person? Ermi's not like that. I don't know. I guess there are a lot of factors. Oh, and, uh... No, I'll wait. It's, it's too offhand to include in this part, so I won't do it. Um, that's all. That's all I have to say about this. Anyway, they take off France, and uh, they actually mention that they rigged the polls to make sure the pacifist parties would win. So, that's why they were like that. Uh, but yeah, the Maginot Line was thought to be impregnable in real life, too. I just gleaned that from what I was skipping through here, and it was a really, like shocking thing for Europe to have that just completely raped instantly. That was a big deal. I mean, I don't even think there's anything that you could compare the loss of the Maginot Line to in modern day. Like, that was just insane. Um, yeah. And Ray has got collector's shit. There we go. Fast food is now served faster. True American fashion. We'll move on here. Uh, actually, wait, because you know how long the dialogue sequences are. I'll just go to the next part, and I'll see you in that. Hmm.